Let's talk about if WAP is for the female gaze. Last week, I covered Katy Perry's Woman's World, and one of you requested that I review WAP through the female gaze. I did state in that video that I think WAP is more for the female gaze than the male gaze, and some of you questioned that. I'm really excited to deep dive with you here, and I definitely went down a rabbit hole in order to make this video, so please leave a like and a subscribe and your comments in the sections down below. I would love to hear from you. In today's video, I'm gonna feature a certain group of artists that I think encompass on a spectrum, the female gaze. In order to prepare for today's video, I did watch the music video for WAP. And something that stands out to me is how bad the censored version is. I forgot that though the music video is amazing, the censored language really ruins the song. Even though the lyrics are quite explicit, I actually found myself enjoying the uncensored version as more of an anthem than the censored version. The music video itself is a visual masterpiece in my opinion, though filled with lots of CGI, also encompasses a lot of of realness. Obviously, we could talk about the snakes or maybe where they shot it, but I think what's more important is the fashion. The use of different female stars in their element expressing fashion statements and dance moves made me feel like this was for the girls. Now, some of the artists featured in Cardi B and Megan The Stallion's WAP might be recognizable like Normani or might be a mystery, but either way, I think all of them really stood out. Even though Kylie Jenner being featured did annoy some people, I actually thought she looked fantastic. As much as we can talk badly about how Kylie Jenner has impacted young girls in a negative way, I think we can also all admit that she is quite a fashionista and even I find myself looking at her Instagram. Now, obviously the whole video wasn't produced, written, and directed by women, but still felt like it was for the female gaze. It shows two very empowered women owning themselves and their bodies, and the lyrics, though explicit, are about their desires for what they want. I think something that stood out to me in the music video is that it doesn't actually feature any men queer or straight. Usually when it comes to using men as props in videos, it depends if you're going for a male or female gaze and the props will be used differently. And I'm using the word props here because when we're making art, that's what human beings end up becoming. In WAP, because there's no men featured, it did again reinforce that belief that this was more for the female gaze than the male gaze. When I was thinking about the use of male models in music videos, art pieces, or even media, I was trying to think about the differences between a queer gaze and a straight gaze. So when I think of a straight female gaze, I do think about Chippendale models. Men with cowboy hats, jeans, and six-pack abs, doing little stripper dances, pulling middle-aged women to a stage so they can give them a lap dance. When I think about somebody who's queer, who uses male models, I think of somebody like Lady Gaga who obviously uses tons of male models in her music videos, but doesn't quite feature them in the same way that a Chippendales model would be used. When I was examining WAP, there was one particular scene or imagery that I thought really stood out to me as most likely for the male gaze over the female gaze. And it was the scene where Meg the Stallion and Cardi B are laying down on that snake pit, and they were sort of almost kissing, but not kissing. I felt a little bit like two straight girls appealing to the male gaze. I don't think Meg Thee Stallion or Cardi B are technically queer. I think though they feel very comfortable around female bodies, I don't think either have expressed an actual desire to date or romantically be with women. I think it's important to note here that straight people can be intimate with same-sex partners without actually being of that orientation. So Meg Thee Stallion and Cardi B might have been with women in the past, but that doesn't mean they're actually queer. They could just be straight women who are very comfortable and confident enough to to engage with women in a intimate manner. I don't think straight women would necessarily find Cardi B or Meg Thee Stallion's WAP necessarily appealing. I could see groups of straight women not quite getting it, but I think that those women end up being and this is not in any way a criticism, but they tend to be more white or suburb or very specific. So think Taylor Swift and Katy Perry's appeal to generally white women. I think that that makes more sense for them to feel seen and understood by that particular group of people. Ultimately, I think minority communities from black communities to queer communities have a lot of overlap in terms of how we express art. So much of queer history is rooted in black history. Because there is an overlap between being black and LGBTQ and an icon, I'm not that surprised that a lot more queer people were into WAP than into the traditional Taylor Swift or Katy Perry, though there's still overlap all the same. I can see why normative culture, more common culture, tends to gravitate towards Katy Perry and Taylor Swift 
over somebody like a Meg Thee Stallion and Cardi B. I mean, Cardi B, to be fair, was branded as that girl who's so different from the normal. Look at all the normie and specifically white people who get to learn about her interesting lifestyle and ethnic background. So I'm not that surprised there is a gap in relatability, but I do think that overlap is interesting all the same. As an Assyrian woman myself, I find myself gravitating towards black music much more frequently than a Taylor Swift or Katy Perry, though I have loved Katy Perry in the past. I find myself in love with Make the Stallion and Cardi B, and there's just something about them that feels so much more empowering, and that's probably just because I relate to it more. I don't think it's bad for women to relate to Katy Perry or Taylor Swift, and I don't think it makes you a good or bad person. I just think it's important to know why we relate to certain people over others. Speaking of Taylor Swift, she is the queen in so many ways and is a safe home for so many women. Though I never got into Taylor Swift's music, some of my best friends really do love her. They identify with her. They feel empowered by her. And I don't blame them. I think it's clear that Taylor Swift is the top of her game and it is clear that people love her. Just looking at YouTube views alone, Taylor Swift has 35 billion views. Cardi B has about 8 billion views and Meg Thee Stallion has about two. So just to understand the difference here, and I know Taylor Swift has been in the game a little bit longer in the mainstream, she is without a doubt the dominant in this situation. And just in contrast, for those curious, Beyonce has 19 billion views on YouTube and Lady Gaga has about 17 billion views. So keep in mind when I'm examining female artists and I'm trying to figure out who are they making art for, it's clear they're often making art for themselves, but they're also making art for the audience. And the question is, who is that audience? It's clear if you watch Beyonce's come up from Destiny's Child to her solo career, that Destiny's Child had more of an appeal to the male gaze and yet was still for the girls. And even moving forward, Beyonce's partition, which is obviously for the male gaze and the straight heterosexual gaze, is complemented by who run the world. And yes, to do research for this video, I rewatched all of these music videos and I am once again reminded at how talented and amazing all of these visual artists are, not to mention how amazing their vocals are. While I was confirming my theory that WAP was for the female gaze, I also ended up watching Taylor Swift's Bad Blood which I to this day still don't understand, but appreciate. It features a lot of really successful women, but it's not really a song for women or about women. It's interesting, it's catchy, the effects are fun, seeing all the women in the video is great. I just don't understand what it has to do with women, and I don't actually think it does. I just think it was a fun excuse to get all her friends together to make a cool music video. Now, in contrast to somebody like Taylor Swift with her 35 billion views on YouTube, I went more niche and I want to use two specific artists as examples of artists that I truly believe are basically just for the female gaze. And that is Ash Nico and Melanie Martinez. Melanie Martinez with her 4 billion views on YouTube versus Ash Nico's 1 billion are prominent in the space, but yet niche. They both had different come ups, Ash Nico on TikTok and Melanie Martinez on The Voice. And yet they're both very distinct and independent. I remember when I found both of them and both of them have remained in my Spotify playlist. They are incredibly specific kinds of artists. They really appeal to people who have struggled and who have overcome. They appeal to that little girl in all of us. They also appeal to that adult woman that feels the pressure of the world around her. They never speak about specific political issues, and yet I can feel a lot of the pain in their lyrics. I think they're pretty clearly focused on the female gaze and specifically very open to queer communities since both of them are queer women themselves. The last person that I wanna talk about before we get into the most important part of this video is Marina. Marina, originally Marina and the Diamonds, is an artist who came up singing about love and romance. She is somebody who was mistook a lot of the time as an artist who appealed to the male gaze, but I actually think she actually appealed to the male gays, like men who are gay and women, it was obvious to me that she was queer friendly. Marina is an icon in her own way. When she was younger, she really did talk about that normal conflict between male and female dynamics only to age into something so much more important. And that's talking about marginalized communities and the way that the world makes them suffer. In her music video, Man's World, which is by far one of the greatest music videos of all time, it's completely for the female gaze. It features LGBTQ people, people of color, all body sizes, and the imagery is completely the female gaze. If you haven't watched it recently, I highly recommend. From the eyeshadow colors to the dress choices, you can see that there was a vision in mind and I think she executed it perfectly. 
The reason this song is so powerful is because Marina doesn't shy away from why women struggle in the world under the patriarchy. It's a very serious commentary about the discrimination that minority communities face, including the discrimination and violent attacks done on gay people and queer communities. Unlike more mainstream artists who tend to be more vague about their activism, Marina doesn't shy away from the details. If you contrast Marina's man's world to Katy Perry's woman's world, you can see which one is truly for the female gaze and which one tries to be but falls short. If you contrast Melanie Martinez, Marina, or Ashniko compared to Lady Gaga, Katy Perry, or Beyonce, you can see who's mainstream and who isn't. There's nothing wrong with being mainstream, but it's pretty obvious if you are mainstream, then you're doing something sort of right and wrong. Marina will never be mainstream enough to get people's attention the way that Lady Gaga, Beyonce, or Katy Perry could do, and and let's not even compare it to Taylor Swift. But when these people make a stance for activism, they usually do it in a lens that's quite digestible compared to a Marina who I think isn't as digestible. Beyonce, though she upset many people during her Super Bowl performance, at the end of the day was digestible. A lot of marginalized communities enjoy football. A lot of straight, heterosexual black men love football and love Beyonce and didn't mind that Super Bowl performance but I don't think they'd be as open to hearing a queer artist talk about how men, straight men, have caused the death and destruction of LGBT people across the world. They tend to be a little less open to that conversation. And people like Marina are having those kinds of conversations. As much as I love Beyonce, Katy Perry, Lady Gaga, and even Taylor Swift to some extent, ultimately they're not here to be activists first. They are here to be entertainers and they are here to go mainstream. I'm not upset with them for playing that game, but all of that to say that the female gaze that they offer to us, though wonderful, relatable, and really iconic in so many ways, falls short of the female gaze that is also political. If you look at WAP in contrast, which started this whole conversation, there's no politics in WAP. And yet there's something really strong, profound, and demanding about the lyrics and the image that went along with the song. The music video is very powerful and yet has nothing to do with activism. So it also falls short. And yet I don't think it ever had the obligation to be political in the first place. For the last part of the video, I wanna talk about two specific kinds of female gaze. I've made these up, these are not real things. I just put names to them because I thought it would be interesting. The first is the type of entertainment female gaze. It's empowering and makes you feel really good about yourself, but also makes you forget the detailed ugliness of the world around you. The second kind is more activism gaze. It's for the females, it's for the queers, it's for the POCs, it's for marginalized communities. It's empowering, but it doesn't shy away from the ugliness of the world. So now we're gonna categorize things, which is my favorite thing to do, as you guys know. So I have a list in front of me and I'm gonna go ahead and go over how I categorize these people, but I would love to hear your input in the comment sections down below. One note before we continue, everything is on a spectrum. So as much as I gave you two categories, remember that they're on a spectrum, much like the Kinsey scale. So we're gonna have entertainment and politics, entertainment and activism, entertainment and the real world. So on the binary, we'll have entertainment and activism, and then in the middle, everything else. So as an example, entertainment, Katy Perry, Taylor Swift. On the very activism side, Marina. So this is the spectrum, this is the binary. Everybody else is somewhere in between. So Beyonce, where would she go? She does talk about activism. She definitely talks about marginalized communities. She's definitely trying to say something. And yet she does appeal to the masses all the same. I would put her on the spectrum closer to entertainment than activism, but closer to activism than not. So she's a little bit past the main girlies, which is why she still upholds her mainstream status. Also to note her continuing to choose Jay-Z felt like a slap in the face to the girls. And let's be real, if Beyonce had chosen to be single instead of reconnecting with Jay-Z after he cheated on her in more than one way, she would have been not only for the girls, not only for more for the female gaze, but she would have actually focused in on her activism rather than her entertainment. One of the rumors circling around for her reasoning for staying with Jay-Z is because of the billions at stake. Her status as a business woman and frankly her networking and connections, which means if that rumor is true, she chose not a happy marriage to sustain long-term, but a business arrangement that her and her husband decided to continue doing for money. So I'm gonna put her closer to entertainment, like I said, but still the activism she does on behalf of black minority communities, I think gives her a right to feel a little bit more in the activism category. When we look at people like Cardi B or Meg Thee Stallion, it's clear that they're not exactly activists in a traditional sense and they are definitely entertaining 
trainers, but something about their dominance and pursuit of their careers gives and sends the signal that they are very serious about female representation in the rap world. You can see them being challenged left and right. And in contrast to somebody like Nicki Minaj, who forgive me so much is such a pick me and continues to support toxic men, including the man she had a baby with. I think in contrast to like a Nicki Minaj, it's clear that Meg Thee Stallion and Cardi B are trying to be something different. And because this spectrum that I'm creating is in combination with the female gaze, I do think that Meg Thee Stallion and Cardi B are more for the female gaze than a Beyonce would be. And I think even more than like a Taylor and a Katie and all those people are, I think they're much more for the male female gaze. Even though it incorporates the female gaze, it obviously has the centering of the male gaze more or less. Though I think Taylor has gotten farther from that as her, as she's grown up. So Cardi B and, and Meg Thee Stallion would be somewhere just on the side of Beyonce and yet still pretty far from like a Marina. Somebody like an Ash Nico or Melanie Martinez, they're obviously singing from the heart. They're constantly focusing on queer issues. They're mentioning depression, anxiety, unaliving ideations. They're talking about really real things that a lot of people are going through and because they're so open with their mental health struggles or at least other people's within their music they're willing to talk about it in a very specific way especially with the imagery they choose to use in their music videos, I would put them much closer to activist than to entertainment alone. Somebody like Lady Gaga, who is mainstream, is an activist and does have a chronic illness, is a much more confusing artist. And though it's a struggle to know where to put her, I still wanna put her closer to entertainment than activism because I do think she belongs there, but I can hear you guys already in the comment section wondering why I put her closer or further on the binary to entertainment. And it's just because she's a little bit of a wild card. She obviously appeals to the masses and she obviously fits in with the Oprah's of the world and I feel like if you fit in with Oprah you're kind of as mainstream as they get so when you asked me about what fibromyalgia is what I would like for you to know and to shine a light on is that many people don't know what it is and we need to all get together and figure this out this is how we're gonna do it there's the neuropsych aspect there's also an immunity aspect fibromyalgia is not an autoimmune disease so what I take an oath as a commitment today with you is it's 2020 and for the next decade and maybe longer I'm going to get the smartest scientists, doctors, psychiatrists, mathematicians, researchers and professors in the same room together and we are going to go through each problem one by one and we are going to solve this mental health crisis. Right? which alludes to some sort of fakeness or a little bit of networking with the wrong people to get where you were in a way that makes me nervous about her. But again, this is me just having fun putting people on a spectrum. When we talk about the female gaze, we're obviously talking about the relationship the female audience is having to the entertainment. If you saw the way WAP took over, shut down, lockdown when we were having it, it brought so many people together. And the most prominent group that I saw on my TikTok feed was queer people and marginalized communities. Not that white more prominent communities weren't impacted or having fun with it. It was just clear to me that that song was so much fun for very specific marginalized communities, which in my mind is about the female gaze. Something about the overlap between the male gaze, meaning men who are gay, and female gaze, women who are, well, the audience to the female gaze. I think there's some overlap with those communities as well, which creates sort of a, um, a harmony between those two communities, even though they're very different all the same. Realistically, the male gays, male gays, have their own community and their own appeal and they have their own gays. Maybe I should make a video on the male gays gays. The male gay gays? The male male gays? I don't know how to say it, but you know what I mean. They also have their own gays that they're looking for, something that's for them, something that appeals to them and is specific to them. It's very specific. It's neither for straight men or straight women or queer women. It's for men who are gay and it's very specific and it's very lovely, but even they have their own category of the gays. Ultimately, this video isn't meant to be too serious and I hope you guys did have fun watching it. I had fun creating it and doing all of these deep dives, rewatching these music videos that I forgot were so iconic and so fantastic. I would love to hear your feedback in the comment sections down below. And if you have any other artists that I should be looking up because I've really been enjoying Chapel Roan, please let me know. I do love me a female gays artist. My head in real life while I'm bed My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine Yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind Cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life?
life a mess, please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Done